Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. I'm back in the garage tonight. Um, after my last video where I uh, finished getting the front drive line set up. Um, this next video is going to be taking care of a lot of different little bits and pieces for the build. Um, the majority of the big parts are now complete, like the chassis and whatnot, but um, a lot of the little pieces are the important pieces. So, first thing to go over is the control of the variable displacement piston pump. So, on a zero turn mower where this type of pump would normally be installed, there would be a, a lever that would move this uh, control arm back and forth. Now, I've chosen to do things a little differently here, uh, and I'm going to use uh, a control cable and a lever. This is actually from the surplus center, of course. Uh, this is manufactured by Prince Hydraulics, and uh, this is used to extend the control of a hydraulic control valve. Um, you can buy these cables in various lengths. This one here happens to be 49 inches and they can range all the way up to 8 feet. Um, so you buy one of these uh, control blocks and you buy one of the cables and it basically gives you a full uh, control cable. And the end of it is actually uh, a threaded 5 millimeter um, End. and so I just picked up some rod ends from Amazon five millimeter and uh, that is what is going to attach to the control arm on the pump and this will allow me a real easy and uh, flexible mounting system for uh, the controls um, and you're probably wondering well what's the throw uh, the cable with the lever, um, you know, fully forward or back. Uh, it just so happens that it's exactly enough uh, to make the control lever on the pump move uh, forward and back. I did do a little mock-up uh, last night on the workbench and confirmed this, so it's going to work perfectly. So some other things that came in. Uh, a little bit of a change in plans for... Uh, the reservoir now, uh, rather than using that big five gallon uh, kind of standard um, hydraulic reservoir, I'm going to use uh, this unit. This is specifically designed for zero turn hydrostatic mowers. It includes uh, a one liter um, reservoir with the aluminum cooling fins, which is awesome. 10 micron uh, spin-on oil filter and this actually has two inlets and two outlets uh, one for each of the hydraulic pumps so this is going to make uh, the setup of everything a lot easier it's a little taller than I was hoping it would be it's about oh, about 12 inches tall the frame is only about 10 so it will stick up a little bit into the floor of the cab wherever I decide to install it, but that's all right. I'm not too concerned about that. But um, another piece from Surplus Center, of course. And uh, lastly, in that Surplus Center package came uh, a couple of these uh, BX drive belts. So this is uh, the X means that it's a notched belt, so it's going to provide uh, better efficiency in the power transmission uh, from the engine to the pumps, um, just better overall gripping, uh, durability, higher strength, all that good stuff. So it even says here, uh, what's that? Replaces B42, so it's a direct replacement. You just buy the, the BX version instead. And aside from that, a lot of the parts of the mini snowcat are coming together. Um, basically, the next video or two is going to be uh, getting these last little pieces taken care of. And then I will be beginning assembly of a lot of the different uh, components onto the chassis. So 
installing uh, the belly pan, skid plate if you will, um, and all the other bits and pieces to hopefully get this thing started and running within the next uh, couple days. Pretty exciting. So yeah, I'm just gonna um, work through uh, getting these control cables installed. I need to put a little plate up at the front here where the end of that control cable can, can fit. So that'll be a plate somewhere about there. I might do one, maybe two, I don't know. We'll see what works best. And then as far as mounting uh, the control levers, those will actually go in the cab of the unit. So I'm not really gonna worry too much about how to attach them to the chassis because, well, they're not gonna be attached to the chassis. So that'll give me some nice flexibility and in installation there. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, just set the camera down and get some video of just me working on some of these smaller tasks here. So I have um, the control linkage all set up now. It's ready to go. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And you can see there is this socket cap bolt up top. That's the stop for the pump control lever. These two little flat plates of, of metal will bump up against that and that's what stops it from traveling any further. So, if I move the lever one direction, it comes up to the bolt that side, and same for the other. So the stop is actually matched um, on the pump perfectly with the stops in the actual lever that I have in my hand here. Um, and I do have some fine adjustability with this nut here. There's one on the other side, and I can move this whole linkage back and forth and get it set up so the neutral on the lever matches the neutral of the pump. And that's something I should mention, this spring here, this return to neutral spring is actually a lighter duty spring. Um, the one on the pump uh, originally was about a 12 pound spring. Uh, the control lever has a spring built into it so I found that having both springs was starting to really add up to too much pressure and so I got this one here it's about a five pound spring it's just enough to help return uh, the drive to zero so let's see if I can do a little demo here and, uh, it's just so slick it works perfectly so yeah I'm very pleased with how that has worked out and that's all there is to the controls for this thing um, I'll set up the other uh, pump and linkage and we should be good to go so having said that I'm gonna move on to a couple other small tasks to take care of here hydraulic reservoir now mounted in place uh, so there is enough clearance under the frame rail so that the filter can come off that's good um, lots of room around the filter to be able to get a wrench on it or I'm doing it and the reason I chose that spot is that um, in the cab 
design, I'm picturing that somewhere around, well, let's say the bench seat will be kind of there. The front area will be just kind of where your feet can go. And that would put that reservoir right under the driver's seat. Um, it'll poke up through the floor a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. I wanted to keep it below the cab just so that airflow could get some cooling um, onto it. And, but it's still in an accessible spot so you can check on it um, when you're just doing your startup kind of walk around. Uh, so yeah, that's another uh, item off the list. The next thing to do is to start taking all of these bits and pieces off. Uh, I'm going to get the chassis flipped over uh, upside down one more time. I'm going to start to drill and tap some quarter inch holes in the frame rails uh, that will be used for attaching the belly pan. And it's just going to be a sheet of uh, HDPE uh, black kind of plastic uh, sheet. And by drilling and tapping the holes just makes it removable for service and maintenance and whatnot. So yeah, that's the next step. Start getting this thing taken down and um, maybe last thing I'll do tonight is uh, paint up the last of these exposed sections of uh, metal. And that'll be one step closer to getting this thing assembled. Okay, so I've gotten all the holes uh, drilled and tapped on the bottom side of the frame rails and basically from the, the axle bracket here to the front, that's 3 feet, 36 inches, and then uh, the frame is 21 inches wide, so I'll cut a sheet of HDPE to cover that. And I'll do the same, uh, I'll cut a sheet for the front, and a separate piece, and that'll close in the front. Uh, I still have to drill and tap quarter inch holes in the front there. And then I'm going to do the same along the side, I'm going to do a skirt out of the HDPE sheet, just to stop snow and all that kind of debris from getting drawn into kind of the undercarriage. Uh, drive area of the, uh, the snowcat and that's about it for now I'm gonna pack things up and clean up and um, basically the next piece I need is that sheet which I'll be picking up tomorrow so thanks for watching